Good morning, everybody. So glad to see you all here this morning. It's great to be together in the house of God on this third Sunday of Lent. And we have the great privilege of celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion this morning. So good day to be together and welcome to you all. Just want to uh, make sure you take a good close read through the Antioch story. Uh, there are several important things coming up. The United Women in Faith will meet this Wednesday here at the church. And uh, so be mindful of that. After worship today, uh, I'll be sharing a presentation uh, about the situation in Israel and Palestine. Uh, it's very uh, thought-provoking and informative. So if any of you can join down in the fellowship hall, we'll be down there for that. And um, those are all the announcements that I'm uh, aware of. Are there others that we, yeah, yeah, Linda? If anybody took a garbage bag for the Lincoln project that yes. we're working on and have filled it up and want to bring it in early, we'll put it in the nursery that if you want to wait and bring it in all together, we need to have them by the 24th of this month, which I think is on Sunday. <coughs> so uh, just keep that in mind. Great. So, so those. Anybody have any questions? Those bags can come back anytime between now and Palm Sunday. Yes. Okay, very, very good. Jane, yes, ma'am. On United Women in Faith, just a little bit different this month, which bring your own lunch and drink. So bring whatever you want for lunch, and then, uh, well, did that fellowship and then go into uh, our program and our business meeting. All right, very good. Um, you can read about it, but just think, make note that this coming Wednesday, uh, our Lenten Bible study will not occur because we're several of us involved with Room in the Inn. But we'll uh, pick up on the following Wednesday uh, and we'll have a bit of a longer session, an hour and a half on that following Wednesday so that we can catch up and uh, do the work that we need to do. Okay? Well, thank you all. It's great, great to be here. Yeah, chill. Excellent. Thank you, Jill. It's hard to believe it's March already, huh? <laughs> it's the last room in the end of the season. All right, my friends, let's turn our hearts and minds to Almighty God. Welcome to Antioch United Methodist Church on this third Sunday of Lent, and especially welcome any guests and first time visitors. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, in Jesus Christ, we have built for us an eternal house, a temple of righteousness, a place of gracious plenty for the hungry and abundant life for the poor in spirit. Fill us with zeal for the body of Christ. Overturn the tables of corruption and greed and upset the imbalance of injustice so we, we may worship you in spirit and truth. Through Jesus Christ, who is risen indeed. Amen. 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 Friends, let's stand as you're able and sing this great hymn of our faith. <laughs>
invitation to confession and pardon. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly seek to repent of their sin, and who seek to follow Jesus in all that they are, and all they say, and all they do. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Will you join me in prayer? With hearts of sorrow, we come before you, O God, to confess what you already know. We have failed to keep your laws. Again and again, we have followed our own selfish will, rather than your holy and life-giving will for our lives. We have twisted your decrees and institutions to suit our preconceptions and interests rather than your own. Forgive us, O oh God, and cleanse us from hidden faults, that the words of your mouth and the meditations of all our hearts may be acceptable to you, our Rock and Redeemer. God shows steadfast love and blesses to the thousandth generation those who follow God's ways. In love, God sent Jesus to bless and redeem God's people. God forgives our sins and restores us to new life. Let us rejoice in God's mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. I invite you to pass the peace of Christ with one another, my friends.
I'm aware of, we want to be mindful of. Dina Grimes is at Bethany Healthcare, so we want to keep Dina in our prayers. Also, track down Crawford and Willadine Watt, and Crawford is at Bethany as well. Um, and Willadine is living with her daughter, whose name is Kathy. And so, uh, we want to keep these uh, folks in our prayers. Uh, I just met a brother named Scotty. Scotty's here with Williams and Nathaniel, it's great to have you, Scotty. Kyle, it's great to see you here this morning uh, with Mary Jane. Um, I, I just wanted to celebrate uh, a couple things. Uh, first of all, Matthew Simmons and his hockey team won their championship game Friday night. Uh, so that's really cool. I was hoping they'd be here this morning. We could uh, pat them on the back, but that's a big deal and very, very cool for, uh, for them. So proud of Matthew. Uh, and also, I just want to thank... Uh, even though she's not here this morning, Wanda Sparkman for filling in while Debbie's gone. And Debbie, we continue to keep you in our prayers. Uh, but Wanda's just done a great job helping us out, keeping the, the pieces moving, the plates spinning here while Debbie's been absent. Other concerns or celebrations we want to share? Yeah, Jennifer. Uh, Mom, I don't know COVID, but now she's just a positive for flu. So, oh, wait, say, say that again for me. Uh, Mom has Oh, shoot. <laughs> Dang on it. She had the COVID and now, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you for, for letting us know. We pray for her. All right, my friends, let's turn to God. Rick, oh, sorry. Rick, I'm sorry. Just want to try and pray for my son and his daughter. They're up this, for a funeral. His grandmother passed away. Ryan's grandmother? No, it's Brett. My Brett. son. Oh, uh, Brett. Brett and Lauren are up for I gotcha. my ex-husband's mother's funeral. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it's my wife's birthday. Oh. <laughs> Happy birthday, Sarah. Wait, whose birthday? No, Rick said that, not Gil. <laughs> Happy birthday, Barbara. <laughs> very, very good. All right, let's turn to God. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that's kind of gray outside, but your light is shining brightly in this sacred space, and we thank you for that, Lord. Uh, bless these that we've mentioned here this morning uh, for those who are grieving, and we remember Brett and his wife as they attended the funeral of, of their loved one. We pray for Debbie and hope that she continues to, to heal, for Dina, and for Tricia, Lord, bring healing and hope to these, that all your children who need your love and healing power in these days. We thank you for celebrations, birthdays, for Barbara and for Matt and his team. What joy it is to, to be a part of something like that. God, we, we pray for our world. You know, you know the situations around this planet that need your attention and your love and your power, your redeeming, redeeming strength. So be with all your children this day, O oh God. Lord, bless our church as we try to be faithful here in our life together. Thank you for each and every pilgrim on the way that's a part of this community of faith. Bless us, Lord, we pray, that we might uh, come closer to you we might follow more nearly your son, Jesus, and learn more of your amazing grace. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads, please. Gracious God, all we have comes from you and has been given to us as stewards that we may live and love in your beloved children. As we bring our gifts this morning, we realize what a small portion they are compared to what you have given us. As we have sought ways to fund church ministries without raising our level of sacrifice, forgive us. If there have been times when we unconsciously favored 
reaching those with more assets to give and overlook those who love and struggle with little forgive us. Guide us in the path for repentance. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Friends, you'll see some words on the screens, and the choir is going to lead us in a song that I'd like for us to learn. It's a wonderful communion hymn. Uh, so listen closely and follow the words and, uh, and, and receive this beautiful gift this morning. the power of God and the wisdom of God. 
For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strengths. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Let's pray. Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of the hearts of each one of us in this place be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. We hold fast to that truth here and now. Amen. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those being saved, it is the power of God. This is what Paul was proclaiming to the church at Corinth. For you see, what happened at Corinth was that many people joined the church for the wrong reasons. They had heard there was a new religion in town that promised them wonderful things. They heard about abundant new life and abundant life. And they sure liked the idea of abundance. This fit right in with the power and wealth that characterized much of Corinth. Corinth was a cosmopolitan city. Uh, it was sort of like the New York of that part of Greece in that time. Cosmopolitan, known for its sort of uh, sin city uh, mentality. Lots of powerful people, lots of money. Lots of power and influence. And so there were these people coming to this new church, which more or less advertised these things, abundance and life. They joined the church looking for power or for connections. That power would enable them, they figured, to have an edge on the competition, that they would get ahead, have special gifts, not given to others. They would be wiser and stronger than anybody else. What gave them these gifts was the Spirit. They, they wanted to be filled with the Spirit as well. You can read about these people in the letter to the Corinthians later in the chapters 11 and 12, where Paul addressed them specifically and implied that they were divisive, Haughty, cliquish, arrogant, rude, boastful, and self-righteous. This was the community that Paul was preaching to. A community not without trouble. Much like most churches since that day, amen? amen. However, Paul said the church is here to create a new, a new way of living in this world. This is Paul's message to them. We're, we're called to create a, a new way of living in this world, not to join a movement or a church to help us get along in the old world. In Christ, we are a new creation. The church is here to transform the world, to change it, not to bless the way it is with its grasping for power, control, and status. The world divides people. We know this. The ways of the world are divisive. Divides people. Defines who we are based upon these categories or divisions. Who is in? Who is out? Who is sophisticated? Who is foolish? Who is right? Who is wrong? Who is a sinner? Who is righteous? That is the way the world organizes itself, by division, by setting up boundaries and saying, you belong over here. You, you belong over there. Paul is proclaiming a Christ crucified who does away with those kinds of divisions and that kind of thinking. In Christ Jesus, 
we are all one body. Christ has knocked down the walls of separation, everything that has divided us. In fact, in his life, he transcended every one of them. Think about this. He pointed out in his living and teaching that there is a reversal of what the world considers wise or privileged or proper. He ate with sinners. He hung around with tax collectors. He embraced the outcasts, people that nobody else would touch in this world. He forgave the condemned. The last thing he did before he went on to glory was to forgive a criminal. He visited foreigners. Jews would have nothing to do with foreigners. They were the enemy. Think of Samaritans and how despised they were by the Jewish people. He went across borders to encounter them. Think of the woman at the well, a Samaritan. And then Paul says this, and this is central. You can't be Christian unless you hold on to this. That Jesus was crucified on a cross. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those being saved, it is the power of God. Think about this. Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, crucified on a cross. We were talking about this the other night in our Bible study. The most horrid way to die. An embarrassment to the person Romans put people on crosses to send a message. Don't cross us or you'll end up like this. It was cruel and unusual and painful. What kind of fools would we be to follow this Jesus? Paul said we would be wise fools. It's kind of oxymoronic, isn't it? Two contrasting words put together to mean something, like United Methodist. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that one hurts. Or I think I've shared this before, but I always loved driving down the hill in the Moore County when I served the church in Lynchburg, and there was a sign saying, Welcome to Metropolitan Lynchburg. <laughs> if you've been to Lynchburg, you know, it's got 361 people, according to the whiskey bottle. There are more than that, but it's a tiny little place, not very metropolitan. Looking to the cross, we are called to be wise fools. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those being saved, it is the power of God. In the cross, all divisions, categories, compartmentalizations, pigeonholes are obliterated. We are one in Christ on the cross and through the cross. And there is a profound mystery to how God gets God's saving work done through Christ's work on the cross. We're studying about this in our Wednesday night Bible study the different theories of atonement, the different ways that Christ's work on the cross make us at one with God. Here are a few of those, in my opinion. Through the cross, the violence of the world is rejected. It is not the way to bring peace and justice into the world. Violence only begets violence. Jesus knew this, and through his nonviolent life, teaching, and sacrificial self-giving, shows the world there is another, better, more excellent way. This example inspired Mahatma Gandhi, who took on the British Empire, took on the British Empire through nonviolence and brought them to their knees. It has inspired countless others to do the same. 
You, you know this. Uh, we've actually done a like a sermon series on this before about Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers, he's, he's one of my spiritual heroes. I read an interview with him where somebody asked him what his rationale was for his programming on television. But he was dedicated to bringing programming to children that was not buffoonery, that was not violent, that was not stupid. And, and he succeeded in so many ways. He was asked, in your programming for children on television, is there a theology to it? And you know that he was a Presbyterian minister. And this was his answer. He said, 1 Corinthians 1, 25 sums it up. This is our text for this morning. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. In this interview, Rogers told of an incident that helped him see what this meant. He and his wife were vacationing with friends. They went to church one Sunday morning. Rogers, and this sounds unlike him, but in the interview he said, the sermon was terrible. <laughs> the, the minister was preaching. All, all the while I was listening to all the things that the preacher was doing wrong. When the sermon was over, he turned to his friend that they were visiting to tell her what he thought of the sermon. And he saw tears running down her face. She whispered to Rogers, he said exactly what I needed to hear this morning. That is when Fred Rogers learned what Paul was trying to tell the Corinthians later on in this book of 1 Corinthians. Love is not arrogant. Love is not rude. Love does not pretend to know all things. Love never puts anybody down. Love finds some way to lift everybody up. cross is foolishness and the supreme love that we saw on that cross as the church as the body of Christ in this world we have to embrace the values of Jesus especially the values of Jesus that went to the cross that took all the sin and brokenness, all the violence and hatred, all the upheaval of the world, and nailed it there where it would not come off. We are a peculiar people, you and I. And if we want to have an impact in this world, an impact in our country, in, in the world of empire, we must make Christianity countercultural. We must make Christianity peculiar again. Like Paul was preaching to these powerful people, wealthy people, people with PhDs, people who probably thought more highly of themselves than they ought. People in Corinth, these are the people Paul was preaching to. He's telling them to get out of bed with empire and all of that stuff that you're fooling around with. If we want to have an impact in the world, in our country, in the world of empire, we must make Christianity countercultural again. And once we untether Jesus from the interests of empire, we begin to see how countercultural and radical his ideas really are. I dare say, if we want to make this country great, people of all religions, because all 
of the great religions in this world have common ground when it comes to morality and ethics. Okay? That's just the truth. If we want to make this country great, people of all religions and people of no religion need to adopt the teachings of one who holds a very dear place in the three monotheistic religions. Of course, a central place for us. And these are some of those characteristics and teachings of Jesus that we would be wise to pay attention to. Enemies, love them. Violence, renounce it. Money, share it. Foreigners, welcome them. Sinners, forgive them. These are the kind of ideas that will always be opposed by the principalities and powers, but which the followers of Jesus are called to embrace, announce, and enact. It's foolishness, I know. Amen. Amen. I've heard God's word read and proclaimed, Lord, add a blessing to it. Help us to not only have heard it, but to do it in the world so desperately in need of your gospel good news. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Friends, we have the privilege of celebrating the sacrament. Uh, I'm going to ask Sam to join me here. And you can find the prayers of great thanksgiving on page 13 in your hymnal. Tell you what, Sam, I need you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. In love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin, and become subjects to evil and death, your love remained steadfast. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast that, renewed by your word and sacraments and fervent in prayer and works of justice and mercy, we may come to the fullness of grace that you have prepared for those who love you. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to redeem the world. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in our likeness, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took upon himself our sin and death and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, his friends, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Then he took something extraordinary, or rather ordinary, I should say, on the table, but did something extraordinary with it. He gave thanks to God Almighty. Then he said to his friends, Drink from this, all of you. This is my life poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves now in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, we pray, O oh God, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, God Almighty, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, as uh, we turn to God in prayer, we pray with the confidence of the children of God, the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Sam, this is the word of heaven. Give it for you. The cup of salvation poured out for you. Now, my friends, all things are ready here at this table of grace. Uh, you're invited to come by the center aisle, receive the sacrament. Sam will give you a piece of the bread, and I'll offer you the cup. You're welcome to stay in prayer here as long as you'd like. And remember that we take an offering if you're able to contribute. Uh, this goes into the pastor's discretionary fund that helps uh, meet the needs of some of the people that come to our doors. So your kindness is greatly appreciated. Come taste and see how precious God is.
through this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Now, in the strength of your spirit, and having communed here in this sacred space, one with another, let us go forth to give ourselves to the world, following our pioneer and perfecter of faith, Jesus the Christ, knowing that it's foolishness at times to live as he's taught us in this world. But God, that is your calling to each of us. Help us, Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, I'd like you to stand. Let's sing this uh, beautiful hymn of our faith as we prepare to leave this morning.